I've always been um, a bit of a rambler um, all through life. Um, my father was a championship cyclist, um, and my mother was as well before before they had any kids. When we were outdoors, outgoing kind of people. We used to have family holidays in in the 1950s yeah, in a caravan, um, and I was an outgoing person. Then I would get out and you know go rambling around and explore. I, I grew up as a child with my only sister, the eldest of the three of us, suffering quite severely with autism. Our childhood life was always adjusted by her disability um, because she, there were things she would and wouldn't do, places she could and couldn't go where she was comfortable. So we had um, our childhood uh, holidays and things adjusted by her needs. We also then, uh, as she came into her teens uh, and changed the kind of service that she received, we became involved with the MENCAP group that, um, that I'm still involved with today. My interest w was, was born then in 1963 and, and my interest has developed. That puts into my into my personality if you like really the the charitable aspect the interest in uh, in knowing that a small amount of effort uh, from someone like myself can make a very big difference to somebody else's life. This, this is this is all, all that I need for a, for a month or two months or three months uh, doesn't matter what the time length is um, uh, working on my rule of three three t-shirts three double pairs of socks three pairs of underpants as bright as possible one hoodie two pair of walking zip-off trousers with only one pair of legs air mattress sleeping bag sandals a wet pack a first aid pack poncho to go over everything all in one bag the main reason for, for doing this walk was to raise awareness and um, increase the, um, the level of understanding within people about HIV transmission um, and the fact that it's still a growing condition, not a, not a decreasing one. Um, uh, set aside some of the myths that people uh, seem to have invented for themselves about it now being a curable condition because it still isn't, and uh, um, generally get people to bring it forward in their, in their own uh, understanding. Um, the, the group I walk for, um, it's a gay men's group, but the information about HIV um, is the same worldwide. Um, it's the same condition, it, it's not selective about um, you know, who the person is, race, gender, uh, sexuality, none of those things matter to an HIV virus. It just sees a body it wants to take over and destroy. The, with this group, I started in the middle 90s. Um, the the organisation had been going three or four years then, and I went to one of their tester days, one of their come and, come and meet everybody and try it days. I found that they were doing the kind of thing that, that was in the back of my mind. They were, they were making the inroads into changing people's practice by a very gentle persuasion rather than the, what the government was doing at that time, which was TV adverts saying young people shouldn't have sex outside marriage, which uh, you know, was a complete and utter uh, waste of time, really. It frightened people for about 10 minutes. This organisation, I found, was, was very gently saying, well, it's your life, it's your choice, but be aware of what the choices mean. OK. Here's it up there. The bag to pack it up, fold it double, and roll it up. Go in the backpack in its compression sack. It goes in the compression sack. Every Boy Scout will know this procedure. campaign that we, uh, we're running at the moment uh, in GMFA, the Count Me In campaign, um, is aimed at doing just that. It's got a very, very simple message. Um, it's asking people to, to stand up and be counted um, as far as um, having looked at their own situation, knowing your own HIV status, um, whether it's positive or negative, 
and an awful lot of people wandering around the world who haven't got a clue whether they're positive or negative. Um, uh, not assuming that uh, you know the HIV status of somebody else. Um, uh, take responsibility, personal responsibility, for using condoms. The most simple uh, method of avoiding transmission of HIV and lots of other sexually transmitted conditions is the simple use of the condom. Valuing yourself and other people's health. So uh, realising and thinking, well, actually, you know, life is a wonderful thing. It's worth enjoying. Um, it's worth enjoying safely because then you enjoy it for longer. Um, I'm an older guy myself now. Um, I've lost a lot of friends uh, in years gone by, particularly when HIV first um, came to the fore. People who'd um, not taken as much care of themselves as they should have done. Um, but died long before their time. Air mattress, little I only use it a neat a neater shoulder length mattress. I don't find the need for anything bigger than that. Somewhere in this little bag. This this was my third major charity walk of any distance. The first really big long distance one I did was 2004. I walked from um, the Mencap Centre in Hillingdon in West London uh, to Santiago in northern Spain. It was a three month trek. Um, very, very challenging, very awe-inspiring. I could just about string a sentence together in French by the time I got to the Pyrenees. Of course, went over the Pyrenees and into Spain. I didn't have any Spanish, so I started again from scratch. I walked with my walking buddy Andy Johnson, who's um, uh, a great companion to walk with and is very good with the map. Um, so uh, you, you know, always sure we're going to get where you're going. We enjoyed ourselves so much, we decided we'd do another one. So 2008, we uh, set out from here in Herefordshire and um, went off to Rome. It wasn't exactly a popular walking trip. Um, it was done by one of the priests who was based in Hereford, who'd been excommunicated, and he went to Rome to try and get himself reconnected. You can get the spare clothes. My travelling towel. That's the bath towel and everything else. A spare pair of shorts. And my pillow, which is also my sweatshirt. And that's the lot. When I planned the 2011 uh, London to Land's End, I was initially planning to do it on my own. Um, and Andy and his wife Karen said, uh, well, if you like, we'll do some of it with you. Um, and obviously I jumped at the chance because it's nice to have company. Well, it started with London Pride on the 2nd of July. Uh, in my mind was, well, how, how do I get the message across that I'm doing it to the, the greatest number of people? A uh, chance to give out a lot of literature to people. Um, and then the group waved me farewell from Trafalgar Square on a Sunday morning, I started on my own from Tower Bridge. Gradually working my way along the town as things got quieter and quieter, there were stretches where I would perhaps do two or three miles and not see anybody at all. It took a few days of, uh, of Thames Path walking um, until I got to Henley, um, so I zigzagged with the Thames, and then set off from Goring and onto the Ridgeway Path. The Ridgeway Path took me through a bit of Oxfordshire, a bit of Berkshire, and then it come, comes to an end quite near Salisbury Plain. And then across Wiltshire, um, I stayed in the campsite where I got a, a great deal of, of support from the other campers. Uh, in one particular campsite I stayed in um, Westbury in Wiltshire, um, the, the general populace of that campsite was uh, families with fairly small children or fairly young children, um, people having a, an economic holiday, um, uh, probably because they're, they're in their early stages of their own lives, uh, young parents in their 20s and 30s with, with very small children. Um, obviously their budgets are sp uh, stretched a bit, they're not going to go to a five-star hotel, so they're camping instead. Um, and I, not, the, not the target audience that I would be expecting to meet um, and to engage with. But in that particular campsite, people were very outgoing. Um, they, uh, quite a few of, the, of these people gave me money, which I wasn't expecting, um, to, to f help fund the campaign. Um, they were interested in what I was doing, very encouraging um, and very chatty about it. Um, and 
and saying things like, well, we, we need to know about, we need this kind of information because we need to build it into our children's education. Um, and I think that's, that's a very important factor um, for the future. The only way of, of um, arresting a condition like HIV is to educate the next generations to such a level that they, they know um, how to look after themselves and how to keep themselves safe um, and uh, gradually break down the, the, the opportunity for this opportunist virus to, to transfer from person to person. So that, that was extremely encouraging. And in our organisation, we do a lot, a lot with, uh, with issuing little leaflets like this, things that people will slip in their pocket and not drop in the gutter. So that's why this is such a tiny leaflet. It's, um, it's very, you can slip it in your pocket. You may not necessarily read it when you're in a pub or club or wherever you've picked it up, but you'll read it the next day. Now that's all packed up. I can put my boots on. I'm ready to face the world. Fortunately today it's nice and dry. Ready to go. The concept and way of the walk changed when I met up with Andy and Karen because suddenly I wasn't on my own. I was more encouraged to get up earlier in the morning. You know, walking as a group, you discipline yourself to say, well, yes, we will. Tomorrow's going to be a hot day. We will get up at five. We will be on the road at six o'clock. The, the discipline of three people together is, is different. You start at the time that you say you're going to start, you do what you say you're going to do that day, um, or you have a, a, a kind of meeting of minds and agree to change something. Um, but it's a more, a more rigid process, if you like, really, than, than being completely on one's own. Um, when I walked on my own, I was really deep into my own thoughts. Um, and we, we set off as a threesome through the rest of Somerset, down and on to the Dorset coast, made our way along the, the, the Jurassic coast, then crossed uh, Dartmoor initially, um, and then uh, Bodmin Moor, and made our way over to the North Cornish coast, uh, and made our way around to Land's End. Um, where <laughs> we jumped on the train and, and came back. <laughs>